Hey everyone, and welcome to the best of three Call of Duty Esports podcast. I'm your host, Josh. Obviously, to my right is Bash on Scorpio 3 Sam, and to our farthest right, Peryush, is none other than Rex. Shady Nero and boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Vanguard is upon us. And not only that, but we obviously had some massive announcements this week. Of course, the Optic Texas announcement. We'll be talking about that today. Of course, the I mean, Vivid happened, which seems like a, 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 a year ago at this point. But that happened this week with Vivid to Florida. And we'll be talking Vanguard and uh, the best teams this early on in Vanguard. So there's a lot to go over. It's going to be a good one. Breaking down uh, the game where we're at right now in the scene. It's going to be a fun time. But before we get into that, guys, I got to ask, boys, what's going on? Well, Josh, I feel like <laughs> I am circulating just through outer space <laughs> and i've come across up. this massive massive black hole there's even some comments flying by there maybe a okay. couple thousand light years away that are getting sucked <clears throat> into it it's that massive and all of a wow. sudden i'm starting to get pulled I'm like what's going on what's going on and 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 i'm sucked through it and i end up in this other dimension and in this dimension and this is the truth <laughs> <laughs> Scump, Krim, Clay, and Shotzi are teaming together yet again for one tournament. Dude, I, it's impossible. It can There's only no be a way. dream, right? That's only a dream, man. It's only a dream. It's gonna get wild. So I mean, yeah, if you, so <laughs> it, it's crazy. Sam, how you doing? Your ex, I implore you. <laughs> you need to use more of your desk chair. In every single one of these intros, because that was phenomenal. If you're yeah. an audio listener, you are missing out. Facts. You are missing Facts. out on the movement that this man just put on. Getting wow. sucked into the black hole, baby. <laughs> I'm doing great. Yeah. It is a Tuesday, not a Monday. I know. Tuesday. We got the Wednesday edition of the pod this week. Because we old Rexy boy had <laughs> tests and essays to write. He had, this he had guy. life. Are you procrastinating me? unbelievable Jeez. but uh we have a lot to talk about today man I, i'm hyped obviously you can watch on youtube you can you can listen on spotify you can listen on Apple podcast and you can drop that comment on youtube which we always appreciate and you can drop those five star reviews on apple podcast which we definitely appreciate as well helps the podcast grow and uh we might just have a pod we might just have a, a, a one to read today a review to read so sam what do you got for us i'm ready this time by the way you're welcome oh yeah had nothing to do with your, uh, your, you know, mm -hmm. r reminder mm -hmm. or anything. Yep. Anyways, yep. no, definitely so not. I, I may be dumb, but like, I'm not sure if maybe you can expand titles on Apple Podcast reviews. I don't think you can. I think it just kind of shows how it is. So uh, the, here's the title: five star review, of course. Okay, awesome well, yeah, podcast course. with great people, but and I'm, I'm guessing. But mm, okay, it's, oh, so it's coming. Leaving here. It's us coming. some mystery, and and and, the, and the, the the name of this is Dingo. Ha ha ha! ha. <laughs> That's ah. what really it is. Dingo with a oh, bunch of ha. Dingo. <laughs> so here we go. Honestly, this podcast has been amazing for me to find. I started listening right before last season and tuned in to almost every single episode. So My pretty guy. much like since it's it's been started. Yeah. The three of you all work extremely well together, but I have to say, Sam is MVP. <laughs> <laughs> bro, this is rigged, bro. This is as rigged as, as Krim and, and Scump on the same team in this tournament. Bro. <laughs> there is no chance. What is this? The only the issue I have... <laughs> it, it goes on. Yo. The only issue I have is I think some of you are too negative on the rocker. Cough, cough. Shady Nero. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was coming. <laughs> on an early episode, you said they, they wouldn't be top seven. I think they will without a doubt. So why don't we make a bet? I'll let you make the terms and let's make it fun and interesting. They so... Oh, I, I, Shady I, I, Nero, you got the main stage here. What's your rest. bet with Dingo? Ha 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 ha. <laughs> and and there's a bunch of ah ha's at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so Dingo A is gonna have to prove who this who that he is the, the real Dingo. Yes. yes. You know? Yeah, we'll have to think about what we would do for that. <laughs> um mm -hmm. uh, on the spot. <laughs> a full episode with the bag. I have on to your really head. think about it, to be honest. 
Yeah. Oh, f- oh, oh, that's a good one. I can wear like a hat or something. A f- no, a full episode with the bag on your head. Yeah. The paper bag. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> if that's what the people want, I'll do it. <laughs> yes. Oh, and then Dingo, I don't know what he has to do. Dingo, ha 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 ha. If you're out there, he has to buy a thousand dollars worth of optic coin. Do you accept <laughs> these terms? The bag yeah. and the optic coin. <laughs> <laughs> there it is so i mean uh yeah i mean things you'll have to see obviously it's gonna be a wild one i don't know um i did want to start with a little bit of a quick question today because we're kind of at the beginning of the year you know obviously the new game and this is kind of a question i think we kind of get once in a while that is kind of fun to talk about at the beginning of a new game is is there a player that you prefer to like watch or imitate your game after that you think you learn well from that you like kind of forming your your play style around in game that you think this guy that's fun to watch and uh, it's easy to learn from with all of the tournaments coming around and all the streams nowadays, you know, here's what I'll say. <laughs> um, I, I mean, you know, people are expecting this, but I think watching <laughs> oh, no. leadership players, <laughs> either whether it's Krim, Clay, uh, Slasher, I don't know, Hydra, whoever, I think, I think like those veteran leader players that we all kind of know, uh, watching them because they talk a lot and they talk about what like how to do things whereas opposed to like someone like Simper Abizi, you might be able to learn like mechanical things um weird spots but um I don't know how much they would talk about like just like an overarching overview of what's to do in That's such fair. detail okay all right Sam yeah so I actually mentioned this prior um Ooh. to you guys tonight oh um the old bash the past the past Call of Duties, I've had an identity crisis. I mean, um, naturally, I'm mean, obviously naturally H four H or H for F. Yes, H for F. So I've I've legit gone from being a sub, like Advanced Warfare. I was sub. Mm-hmm. I've gone like AR and like flex, and so like you know, you could call me a flex, but like. Really, it's just trying to find like where I yeah. am, you know. And so, honestly, like whenever Gunless streams, I love Dude, watching Gunless because he's kind of like, makes sense. You know, he's kind of in yeah. that kind of same area too. So, like, I kind of like does watching it all. Gunless. He's nasty. Yeah. So whenever he streams, he, I know it's not like a normal thing for him, but I do love watching him because I feel like he knows when to pull out a sub or when to pull an AR. Like he's he's one of those true flexes. So yeah. I think, yeah, that I also think sense. he's another like player that's good to watch. Just the way yeah. they communicate things, it's easy to follow. For mm-hmm. sure. Well, I mean, so far in Vanguard, I think I, I've, I've loved watching Illy. Like his Dude. comms are really good. And it's great. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot from him because he, he really, he like really speaks his mind. Like 100%. when he has like a strat or like he notices something, he always speaks it out. And I think that's been nice to help me like learn weird spots and like SD strats <laughs> so far. So I, I have liked watching Illy quite a bit. Especially since he's been streaming so much because it's optic now. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, I think Standy's also really fun to watch. I mean, you know, not biased or anything, but like shout Standy's out. definitely. Yeah, oh, yeah shout, shout out Standy, out. man. Shout out Standy. Legend. I mean, I, if you didn't get a chance to go watch the one v one me episode, I, I had Standy on the channel, and uh, I have nothing but I'd, amazing things to say about that man. Oh yeah, he's dude. a good time, dude. That by the way, Josh, that video was phenomenal. Like oh, it, was. it was, it was. was. I know we're all biased here, but like, oh yeah. A little bit, but wow, that was a great video. It was Pretty really nice. good. He was really like, I feel like really well spoken. And oh, he brought so much energy too. He brought so, like it was. He was really good on camera. He was great, honestly. Oh yeah, and I thought he great. I thought he gave like great insights on yes, yeah, like just his come up and like how he experienced the amateur scene and like because it's interesting hearing his perspective because a lot of the older pros don't have any like idea how to go pro nowadays because it's like yeah. they're like. I don't know. Just yeah, I, I've been a pro. I became it's pro just, in BO2. Yeah, you know, like you know well, what are you gonna say? You know, it's it's cool too because it's, it's like I feel like he was like like really honest and like he even said like he wasn't like a god at first. Like he like worked hard and, and it's like yeah. I feel like hearing his story like could be like an amazing like um, encouragement. I would say to. to like like a newer players who are trying to get like get mm-hmm. into like the pro league like yeah he, or just start he, grinding a little bit he, he just grinded and and he learned and he was and he practiced smart and that's kind of like yeah. the biggest thing is like emphasizing practice and like 
talking and like just working through practice with an objective every day and like trying to work yes. on something every single day to walk away feeling like you're better than the last like it was just a really good conversation i I'd recommend it yeah i agree just one last thing because like oh, <laughs> i feel like that's something we all or a lot of us kind of like knew but no one really was very art like articulated it until i think with your interview is like much more clear about like having a smart practice mm-hmm. yeah definitely because i mean like I, I loved when he like kind of talked about uh like some of his past teammates how he used to get bodied by t- people that he used to team with or like guys that he used to play against and now he's in the pro league and they're not you know and he like, has that relatability because he's like I wasn't very good at the beginning like he's just like yeah, everybody else he great. wasn't very good I um, yeah it's crazy and like and most and of the like pros the, yeah like whether it's other pros fault or not like some of them are like kind of like afraid to like admit that. But yeah, like he was like I like he wasn't like crazy at the beginning. Like he just no. started and he started playing, he started learning, and then he grew to to where he is now. So I think it's a really cool story. Yeah. Oh but. yeah, dude. It, it definitely goes to show, like also like how good of a teammate he is. And then also he talked about the. Uh, I was gonna bring this up later in the pop. I guess we can just bring it up here now. Like, um, he talked about the because I asked him about the honeymoon effect mm-hmm. and like the honeymoon phase, and he's like, "Yeah, man, like." playing this many tournaments early on in the year from amateur scene helps like i i showed them things that they didn't know about when i when i joined and i'm like mm-hmm. that made, that's we talked about this last year like that's the only explanation because nothing else makes freaking sense it mm-hmm. makes and yeah yeah earlier in the year last year the the people who came in immediately changed the teams and then we saw it impact the team less and less as the year went along which makes sense because the pro players are catching up mm-hmm. yeah so I just thought it was really good overall. Sandy's a beast, and I highly recommend watching the episode. But yeah. um, well, there you go. So there's some there's some good guys, obviously. And that was another thing Sandy said in the episode. Actually, was that watching he he got a lot better by watching pro players himself, like when he's coming up and mm-hmm. uh, that. So I think it is watching pro players is really important. So it's it's, and it's not to mention how many S and D tournaments are going on right now. It's fun to watch. So mm-hmm. um, well, I guess that said, I guess we can kind of get into the news of the week and talk about what's going on. So let's hit it. The Call of Duty News of the Week. News here. <laughs> news here. Fire. Um, Biggest one, Um, as we all know, the process oh finally came out. Oh, my goodness. And it there's happened. an Optic Envy merger. Now, Optic Whoa. Texas. That Whoosh. was the bomb right there. Optic freaking Texas, dude. I know. First they reaction. What are your thoughts? First reaction is, I'm still a little pissed about the naming scheme. Like, can yeah. you not just be normal and flip it? <laughs> like, I get like you're trying to be like <laughs> okay, the different boomer bash. I know, I know. This is like totally like my like boomer side showing. But I'm like, just just fall in line with the rest of the league. Come on, just be Texas Optic. <laughs> but I get it too, where like it's like you know Optic is supposed to be first and all this stuff. But I don't know. That was like okay, whatever. But Regardless, I it was really cool announcement. And then also like I'm sure we'll talk about it like later, but like seeing these guys play right now, at least like where they're at now, these this could be a disgusting team. I, I kinda I kinda rewind a little bit of what I've you know you're, said you're previously. Hopping on the bandwagon. Yeah, yeah. I, I might be kind of on the band, the the old optic. Texas yeah, you're you were you were so. you're ditching the hater bandwagon and hopping right on the yeah. optic bandwagon. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. It is I, tough. I really think it this merger feel if it's it feels way better than like that infinite one a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, and like this one is just like Oh, it all makes sense. Like it's 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 like the emerging of like the two. Like it's just no two teams are more perfect for each other. Yeah. So maybe we should go over kind of like the the basis of the deal a little bit. So mm-hmm. to to clarify, it is a merger. It's not Envy acquiring Optic. It's an actual merger of the brands into one. Um, the Empire, the Empire brand is currently going to be put on the table on the shelf. It's it's going to be no more for a while. They said they're not opposed to bringing it back at some point. They even mentioned in the AMA on Reddit that, you know, maybe a challengers team, if they ever pick up like a an amateur squad, that could be like the fun way to use it for a while or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's out of here. Uh, Hex is now the co-owner of Envy and the president of Optic Gaming. Makes so sense. It's Hex is fully a partner now with Hastro. 
So they're going to have collaborative control. Of course, Envy does have an investment group. So you do, they are what, like technically working for the board of directors. It's like there is, you know, they're still employees of the company as well. Like they're, they're the, they have to work for the board of directors. So there is an interesting, you know, dynamic there now with Hex, but Hex is going to have basically full creative control still and still a lot of influence with the optic team. Obviously, Scump had a huge part of, 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 uh, he talked a lot to Scump before committing to doing this. And like, is this something that we want to do? And, um, it, you know, it's the merging of the competitive focused org with the content yes. focused org. And that's kind of what you're talking about, Rex, the kind of the harmony of that merger there. And um, basically all that, the other big part of that deal was that Envy acquired the 12th CDL spot from NRG in that deal with the hopes of selling it, which is kind of the biggest, weirdest, probably whole thing out of all of this yeah. <laughs> was that thing. And we'll talk about the mutineer situation that kind of caused the whole mutineer situation as well. And um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at right now with the optic merger. And then optic announced that Z laner, Bobby Poff and Seabass were officially joining as Warzone players with Teep, who was already on envy. So now they're all going to be on the optic Warzone team and the optic gaming Warzone team as well. So Mm -hmm. And then Rambo and Sender are the coaches for the squad. Yep. Which is so great. So I think that was basically all of the... Oh, and General is still potentially going to be their substitute, but it's not yet confirmed. So that's the thing. That's kind of all of it. So with all that in mind, um, thoughts on the whole situation? Um, yeah. I mean, basically, like I said, I think it's like the perfect merger for these two teams to be able to compete with some of these... Um, People with more resources, you know, like LEG and um, subliners, even, uh, and just and just who they are, the brand that they both have, and to combine it all, um, I don't know. It's a match made in heaven. Yeah, yeah. I I I was honestly like shocked um, when I saw that uh, AMA on Reddit. Like, I didn't think. Like, I guess in my head. I thought this was like a temporary thing for like Hex to like kind of like gain some like some traction. Time. Yes. But then like hearing that he's the co-owner of Envy, like no, yeah, this is this is huge. the long haul. Huge. Yeah. So I it's weird. Like I I agree. I think it's a really cool like harmony merger of like two great brands and like I think they can go the distance, but it's like almost kind of like we like like lose out on that uh rivalry now you, you know the the e, e classico i don't know it, it's like yeah that that is a little hard to take but you, you know this is the franchise league things changed you, you know money needs to be made and um i i i think if like optic had to merge this was probably their 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 best option so i i'm excited i'm like kind of nervous at the same time too like what does this mean like i i don't know it's like a mixed bag of emotions you know and for sure well we'll see how it goes but i, I think like, like the biggest thing is like what are they gonna like just not try with that 12 spot like because like i just yeah, don't the 12 think they're gonna spot is by far the biggest x factor right yeah now. well i kind of have an answer so on the q a they said that one of the questions is what is your plan if you can't find a buyer for uh the 12 slot before the cdl season starts um hastro and hex answered saying we will hold the team participation agreement and continue to work on finding a buyer as know, in there would be like, there would be 11 teams like the, like minimum like like effort like get like get a team though right like they're not going to try that hard if they well, can't I mean, sell it they i mean they need to sell it though i mean that's that's you know I mean, they don't want to keep millions. it i imagine yeah multiple millions that's currently in the bag it's oh, definitely for sure. a weird situation because yeah. it's like i mean a how do you even do a league with 11 teams yeah b if you know it how it's hard to sell a score it's hard to sell a spot to a team well the, the, a, b why did envy buy it if they didn't think that they could make a profit on it unless yeah. unless it was purely like a hey we're gonna help envy or nrg's exit out here just because they helped out hex but that's what that i kind of feel like it was yeah? i mean i kind of like just because when hex went there it seems like energy was just 
kind of doing them a favor and like we'll buy the spot for you um, yeah we'll pay the we'll pay the salaries until you can find a a per a buyer or yeah something i don't know what the agreement would be but then whenever they had their you know whenever they decide to split ways um the right moral thing to do would probably be like you know what i'm gonna i'll take it with me because i know you guys weren't the ones who really wanted to be involved with this um yeah. but i don't know that's a it, it's weird it's weird and it seems sketchy like i don't i don't i i don't know i hope they find somebody but if energy didn't i don't like, like who what 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 kind of sucks though is like so you know obviously like with like the washington dc they were like trying to get in, but then like they they backed out. So like at like what point does Envy like try to field a roster? Like, you know, like are they gonna try to like like wait till like the very last minute and and then just pick up like four? Well, they they guys are not allowed. Or? They are not allowed to field that team. Yeah. yeah. So they literally cannot. They it's it's illegal for them to. So. They only own the spot right now to sell it. There's, there's, I it's see. just weird because okay. you have no leverage. <clears throat> but like <clears throat> the, the, the only situation that businessly would make sense to me is that NRG was basically fire selling it. Like yeah. we're going to take a loss on this, but like we need to sell it. And that maybe that's why Washington was interested because they're going to get a good deal on it, maybe. And then NB's like, well, how about we'll, we'll pay up slightly more than Washington because we think that we can make a profit on this within, within six months. Mm. That would but, be my thought. That, but why? <clears throat> why? Who? Like, if if why would Envy be able to make the profit, but not NRG? Maybe Energy Energy was gonna settle for a quick exit on the sale because they just wanted to get out before the season started, and maybe Envy feels like they have a little bit more leverage because they're now with Optic and they can and they can kind of swing that leverage a little bit better with the season and selling the spot. I don't know. Or maybe they maybe Envy thinks they have some pretty good connections in the scene or like insight maybe. insights or relationships with someone that they didn't get a deal done. I don't know. I mean that it's the biggest X factor right now, exactly with how that's gonna play out. And obviously every COD fan wants that spot to get sold. And that created the fallout of the Washington DC roster, which resulted obviously in the Mutineers news, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um yeah, so I don't know. That that's crazy in itself. Obviously, one quote that Hex had from the podcast with with uh Hastro was you know, what's scarier than optic? It's optic with resources. Mm -hmm. And and that was his biggest like why reason for why he wanted to be able to, you know, get out of his current spot just where they were mm -hmm. and make it happen. You know, this I think all kind of dates back to NRG and his relationship with NRG. Like he was the co-CEO of NRG. And then things kind of felt went under, probably because I would imagine Andy was hoping that Hex would buy into the Huntsman and like be willing to build this thing from the ground up with each together. But then Hex is, you know, his heart was with Optic and wanted to buy it back. Yeah. And then when he had the opportunity, it was just kind of like, I have to like my, 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 my soul will not forgive me otherwise, you know, mm -hmm. like, so I mean, if that ends up happening, I get it, but um, I don't mm -hmm. know. It, it's wild. It's, it really is. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, then immediately they signed Z laner and you know, Bobby or uh, Bobby Poff or, and then uh, Seabass. So, it's interesting. What do you think about Rambo and Sender on that love squad? It. Absolutely love it. Um, yep. I think with Sender, we really got like little to no information about how he was as a coach, who like what he was doing or anything. And I think that it just happens in COD in general. But um, I think with the process and everything, you could really see how invested he was in the team, in their success. Um, and I just wish I would have seen that more throughout the year. And it, I mean, might have, I don't know how much hate Sender was getting or anything, but, um, yeah, but definitely, had, you know, I have more respect in that way too. Did you, what did you, I feel like I got the vibe that like Envoy and Sender had the best like back yeah. and forth. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I don't want to speak like too heavily on like, where you know where dashy and scump and formal were with on, yeah on how well, the, i mean that's the thing i think that the relationship out. there with rambo and you know rambo was literally scump's like cod father or in the early days of cod back in like mw2 mw3 mm -hmm. kind of like ushering scump into the scene like quite literally on optic yeah um so I, i'm sure i mean scump only has respect for for rambo so i, I think that's going to go really really well and rambo's obviously so so good and he's such a good he's also just a good 
Like he's a guy that can keep the keep the team in check, and he's gonna have the respect of all four of them, which is so big, then, especially for Optic, because it seems mm-hmm. like Optic, at least this year and probably previous years, like have a tendency to start um, maybe goofing off a little too much. Their in egos is kind of their egos is kind of puff up a little bit sometimes, and like I think part of that splitting up T two P is that thing that's one of the benefits is like. When Scump and Formal are together, they feel like whatever they, if they agree, that goes. Like if Scump and Formal agree on something, then that is what's going to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think splitting that up kind of is good because then it puts, now Scump's in his own minority with, if if Dashy agrees with like, you know, Illy and Shotzi and, you know, I think that whole situation helps them a lot. So Mm -hmm. um, I was was really happy to hear Rambo and Sender there because, but Sender I think still has a good relationship with like Dashy and, and Scump. So then him is like a, co-coach with Rambo I think it's gonna be a really good situation yeah I think yeah, it's a like, really good dynamic I was gonna say like I don't know what what his like overall um what what the community thinks of him I yeah I don't know but you can't say that sender that like doesn't care for 100%, like yeah every oh, video sure. Every VOD, he was he well, was completely invested in like the game and the and the players have never said a bad thing about no, him. They, they have yeah, all, no. always said that Sender mm-hmm. has absolutely been great. So it's mm-hmm. like I, you have to you have to go on their word. I, I, and based off what we've seen in, in scrims, and he gives good feedback and yeah. he's mm-hmm. communicative. So yeah. I, I, I think it's going to be a good situation there with Rambo and Sender. I think it's going to be. I think it's great. Yeah. Me too. So yeah, high quality, high quality. I don't know anything else there with the whole optic situation. I mean. That's basically it, but it, it, we'll obviously be talking more about Optic a little bit later with the, the recent performances and things along those lines, but um, it's going to be exciting. So I, I do want to talk about the Mutineer situation next, Rex. Okay. Uh, Mutineers, uh, they dropped Havoc, then they picked up so, Vivid to replace him. Yeah. Right. This was the fallout of, of the Washington, D.C. team falling through because of the purchase of the spot. Well, we don't actually know. We don't know the causation yet. So this was actually, I guess, maybe another factor there was we don't know if the causation was the deal fell through with D.C., therefore Envy stepped in to buy it or Envy offered to buy it. Therefore, the deal fell through with, D, you know, with D.C. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't know what happened first mm-hmm. yet. Um, so it could go either way at this point, which maybe hopefully we'll get some clarification on that by next pod. But. It is interesting. So that fell through. Obviously, that roster was supposedly going to be Tiege, Methods, uh, Paul X, and Vivid. That's for the Washington team. For the Washington, D.C. Demon Cats. or the Demon Cats. <laughs> so what yeah. I, which, is a, which is an absolute shame. Well, that here's the thing. That... We even had like a team name. And like, so they must have gotten really far along in the process. Yeah. And yeah. they like backed out last minute for some reason. Or else Envy outbid them for it, which would be the weird but situation. That's the, and then you just don't know why Envy would do that. So yeah, weird. exactly. So yeah, that team fell, that team fell through Paul X and, and uh, methods put out some tweets like, yo, down bad. I'm mind blown. Like, I can't believe this happens. And then we find out like an hour later that, yo, the DC team, the deal fell through no chance. Like what? And uh, so now we're back to square one, but yeah, Along with the news racks, I mean, it's crazy. Mutineers, Havoc's gone. Vivid's in, dude. Holy it's, crap! It it's so intriguing to me that this goes back to our conversations about Yeez and Havoc. Why would you bench Yeez, but then constantly like say he could have a chance? Say say he he could have a chance, but now Havoc is the one that's gone. Vivid's in, and he's just still on the bench. It's like so my why, question is why they why, even have havoc in the first why place. Why was havoc even in there in the first place? Yeah, I, dude. What, I what, don't what's the know. point? I don't get that. It it might have been like one of those like because they dropped him before and then they picked him back up and then they dropping him again. There's like they don't want to like make the same mistake almost maybe. Um, but they seem pretty confident and vivid. Um, so that mutineers team would be uh, it's a uh, skies awakening vivid. Dave and Dave Patty. Dave, Dave. So I wonder, is Dave Dave Patty? Is he? Uh, yeah. So Dave's gonna be the AR. Or is he commun- Is he like a? I feel like Mutineers' biggest problem is communication. Um, do you, is Dave Dave's, is Dave Patty a good? So yeah, that was one thing that Standy talked about in the, in the episode. Is that Dave? Because Dave and Standy are kind of a duo in the in the AM scene, mm-hmm. and so uh, Dave has great comms. 
uh, really, really good comms, high communicator. And uh, they even talked about that in the Mutineers release video is that, uh, that, you know, they were all talking like Will it was mentioning like, yo, Dave, Dave's comms were, are great. He's a high communicator. And so him coming in there and we vivid vivid's definitely a pretty low key guy too yeah. so you know it, that's my only worry is that awakening and vivid are both kind of low key guys like they're not like high energy guys no so you having an smg duo of awakening and vivid who are kind of low key chiller dudes would be my only question is if are their comms going to be good enough to keep up but the talent is there on the this talent's squad there now. yeah they are a huge X factor. I mean, ginormous X factor. I'm, I'm curious. I, I agree with you, Rex. Um, for some reason, Mutineers just just seemed that that their communication wasn't there. Um, they they certainly had the talent. Um, so, like now, do we do we get a a different story with with Mutineers? Um, I don't know. I I think they're they are the biggest dark horse. Uh, of every year, probably. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> every year, honestly, at, at at this point. Um, so I don't know. I'm excited. Um, I'm curious. I would love to see Yee's on the starting roster, but I get it. At at the same time, um, so I don't know. We'll see. He he could make the move, one to two majors in. I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I mean, it probably is very meta related. It's like, you know, how will Skies feel about flexing? Like, you know, what if it ends up being a three SMG meta? Then suddenly Skies has to flex on half the maps. And then like, you're like, don't love that. And then maybe you end up bringing in Yeez to, to, be, to be that guy. Awakening flexes again. And then Dave would hit the bench. It just kind of comes down. There's a lot of different factors there. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, it definitely gets me excited. The upside, I mean... We know we all know Havoc can be a very solid player. Like he can be that he can be the bants of your team, you know, mm -hmm. the, the reliable communicator glue of a squad. But the other guys have to be clicking on all cylinders and the communication has to be elite from those other players. That is definitely not the case right now. So we'll see what happens with Vivid. I mean, Awakening can definitely keep up with Vivid. I think that'll be an interesting dynamic to keep track of about how Vivid and Awakening play off of each other as, as an SMG duo. Yeah, I think Awakening is one of the most interesting players to follow in the CDL. Oh, just because sure. he's so low key, like he has no like crazy like like uh, he's you just know, no, no he's not a high energy guy. Yeah, no yeah. high energy stuff, no drama, no anything. But when he plays, he just does some unreal things that you just yeah. never seen before. And you're like, who? What? Um, but he's kind of a lone wolf, maybe. Like I, I don't know. Like you just can't tell. So he, yeah. he's always been just one of my favorite people I do to watch. like the addition of Vivid. I mean, like, you know, Vivid's an S&D beast. And so it's like bringing in him or S&D last year with the Mutineers was so inconsistent the whole year, even with Havoc, who's a pretty good S&D player in his own right. But he's kind of always known for playing the weird credit corners and doing weird flank strats and stuff where Vivid's a more like traditional S&D player. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I think I like this squad a lot more in S&D with Vivid on the team now. Mm -hmm. So... And then it comes down to what the, the third game mode will be and how this team plays out and respawns with Vivid on the team. Um, and that's going to we'll probably put a lot of time in and see how Dave Patty plays with that roster in respawns. Mm -hmm. True. So I don't Very know. True. It gets interesting. I, I'm excited, though. I mean, do you guys like the squad more or less with Vivid? More. More. I think more. But I, again, I just have this, you know, it's just chemistry, communication type things that I'm more concerned about. You're just putting in another more low key guy on a roster that that's their biggest problem. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe yes, Dave will be that guy that can really solidify and, and their coach as well. Their new coach. Yeah. Will it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. So what do we got? So this just happened today. Like an hour or two ago. Yeah. Uh, team Summertime it, it, hitches thing. They're doing a $70,000 tournament. Tournament. It's random. It's quasi randomized team. So it's two yeah. subs um, from a team It'll and then two ARs from a team. goes live. Um, and so. But don't go watch that. You know, stay here. Listen to the pod. Obviously. Stay here. Shotzi. <laughs> Scump. Crim6. 
and Clayster. The odds of that were freaking it's a 12.5% chance that happened. We're going to be tuning in to one of these guys' streams because we want to see how Crim6 and Skump interact with each other. How are yeah. they all going to play together? Oh, that-, that clip on the process of like Formal and Skump just walking past Crim in the hallways mm-hmm. at, at, was that at Champs or at Stage 5? Not even, not even looking at him in the eyes. It was weird. I know. I'm it, really, it was very awkward. I'm, I'm waiting for some... Well, Skump already tweeted out that he's like, I'm, you know, I'm ready to play. Yeah. Like, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, again, I mean, like, maybe it's not even worth talking about too much because by the time people listen to this, it'll already be happening. But like, yeah. <laughs> well, let's, well, well, Crims, I mean, my question, Crim6 going to, you know, flake out or not? I don't think he will, but nah, I, I hope think. they do talk. I hope it's not just like complete shut off from each other, you know? Oh, yeah, uh, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, so this was about there was a cheaters list that came out. Um, and I'm not going to go through all the names on the list. Well, there was um, all cheaters drama. Yeah, it was a whole cheaters drama. Uh, Clacer, uh tweeted about this, and I thought this was, might be an interesting conversation. Um, but he said, if that list is even close to correct, I've lost hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars worth of prize money to some of those players. Is the anti cheat going to be for multiplayer? Two. Yeah, I feel like we probably need to preface the whole situation here. So what happened was in the op, I'd imagine most of everyone already knows this, but basically what happened is the optic loss of this team. And people were like, yo, this was mad sus. They had some insane reads, like some crazy reads in this tournament. And then long story short, viewers, you know how the optic fans are, kind of started digging. And then Attach was like, yo, I think this is a- I think this is actually legit. I think they might actually be cheating. And basically they found proof that like you, the guy was streaming with like uh, proof camps, like showing his screen from kind of far away. Mm-hmm. And then there was a clip of him planning the bomb and you could see a name tag running through the bomb. Yeah. And that was what was the proof that was needed. And to, the list uh, came out from, from the accused. Like he basically admitted, OK, yes, I was cheating. Here are some other people who cheated, too. Yep. Yep. And that's what. And then he he exposed everybody else. So that's kind of where the list comes from. Thoughts so, on let's go GA snipers. so yeah basically it came through that illy illy is uh illy said that pros are considering or some are wanting to ga snipers please god no please in this game again and illy was very anti it thought i was kind of anti it in cold war too i feel like I don't know. You can well, say it's were- cheesy and whatever, but it's like it's part of the game. That's kind of what Illy was saying. It's like it's part of the game. And like you're just going to take the most entertaining aspect out of this. Um, at least for me is watching like snipers and S&D are like super, super fun to watch and just yeah. to throw it away and smokes too. like we're just eliminating so much content there. Yeah. And I, I and I I wonder if the people who want to G8 are doing it because they're scared that these young guns are going to be better at sniping. Well, it's interesting because it's like in Cold War, snipers got G8 because smokes were broken and because the maps were so big and open, like you just literally couldn't have snipers if you didn't have smokes, which is totally fair. Mm-hmm. But in this game, I think smokes are at least in an OK spot. They're not like great, but. They're, they're in at least a decent spot where it works to, to, counter, to counter things and everything. So mm-hmm. I, I, at least personally, I think, you know, that there's no reason to GA snipers. Like, it's not, they're not as OP as they were in Cold War, even though they were, you know, and they, and they were broken as F in Cold War. But I don't know. I would be really pissed if they GA'd snipers and smokes. Oh, for sure. I'd be there's, furious. I would be furious too. There's obviously something missing. Whenever you watched S&D last year or you know, whatever. It's like, man, there, there's, there's players who are sniper specialists who have not been able to like get their, right. their talent out there. So yeah, I, we need snipers I in the league, man. S and D without getting to see de- without getting to see like Dashy or Illy or Simp or yeah. anyone snipe. I think Cold War S and D was, it was a, I think it was a really boring year of S and D. I loved, I mean, I still loved it, but I liked playing it. I thought like it was fun enough, right? And like it's S and D is always going to be fun to watch, but like it, it just felt more bland than like if we had the snipers and smokes and everything. It's like it just adds. I agree. So I, mean, I think much. smokes smokes add so much to S and D. Like it, it, when it comes to strats and making huge plays and how it plays out. So 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm with you there. I will lose absolute fall if we end up getting those GAs. I'll rage. I really will. Um, Pristini joins FaZe. Substitute for FaZe. Joining up with Arsty's uh, ABZ Simp, his old guys from United. Heck yeah. I think it makes total sense for him to be a substitute. And, like, and honestly, if you think about like who's like a, the best substitute you could get, Pristini is... I, he might be the best substitute you could get. That's like well, a I mean, really like, good the sub. players who aren't signed right now. I mean, it's like Paul X or him. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, it's it's fantastic. Tiege, maybe some of those guys, and then like the other amateur players, obviously. But like, yeah, I mean, obviously, they, I mean, he won champs with these guys. They they they're great friends. Obviously, he's, are, the, the, the twin. Chem, yeah, the chemistry's like, there. His bro, like, it this just makes so much sense. And he's a good player. Like, it's not like yeah. he's like trash. Like, he could substitute, no. and they could probably still be a pretty good team. For sure. For conspiracy sure. Conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory. There was no sub mentioned on the on the official announcement. That's so true. Is it possible he's just a content creator? I mean, yeah. So what happened is that CD Intel posted substitute and then he like he quote tweeted, Prestini quote tweeted um phases like who wants to be our substitute post. So I mean he's he, he's probably the substitute, but you know, you know, he could do some content too. Could could mm-hmm. just be like a lazy post on Phase's part. Not sort of like felt out, like to me, hey, to be honest. But. Here's our yeah. sub. Yeah. Fair um, play, fair play. But I think it makes total sense, and I like it a lot. I, I agree, man. Persini deserves it, bro. He's, he's, he's a beast. So we got some ex, some retired players coming back to the challenger scene. Yes, sir. Rated is coming back and competing in challengers again. Yeah, man. We, we already talked about him a little bit because if he's on that roster for the 70K attorney, but... Yeah, man. Good to see, bro. I mean, rated obviously like Red Reserve and all of those teams. He, he was, was a really what? high quality player, and in this type of game, I think he could be really good. It's on Ravens, right? He was he was yes. he was the Ravens, yes. and then eventually he got dropped, yep. and then um, went and did content creation or whatever. And but now he's coming back. He couldn't resist. Yeah, the I mean, itch. he's he's made quite a bit of money in Warzone. I I would I, I'd be interested to see how much money he's end up he's made. Um, but yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Aqua, who announced his retirement maybe a few months ago, um, he's coming back. He's playing sort in challengers. Of. He's giving it a go in challengers and seeing what happens. I, I don't think it's a guarantee that he, he sticks around. Probably depends how it goes early on in challengers, but yeah, he's playing with TCM, Fame, and Katani. So it's a pretty good squad. They, they had some success, like, especially throughout Modern Warfare and stuff, too. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we'll see. We will see. Um, and then Classic as well as competing in Challengers with an odd duo with Shawnee. Yeah, I thought this was kind of yeah. weird, but kind of weird. I mean, like to see it. Shout out, shout out, Classic. You know, I'm not sure how they got go. connect. Like, they've never been teammates before. They're EU. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but either way, cool. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's it. But I that's, think that's, that's kind of the, the news. Yeah, man. All right. So, well. With that said, I guess we can kind of head into we want to talk at least a little bit about Vanguard before we talk about the best teams early in the game. So um, without further ado, let's talk some Call of Duty Vanguard and uh, that's it. This is the price we pay for what we do. So Vanguard boys, thoughts boys, and then go Vanguard things you love to see Woo! and thoughts. You've been playing a lot of it. Uh, you know, GBs watching tourneys, getting in games, some pubs, some action. What are you guys' thoughts so far on the old Vanguard after a few days? <laughs> well, I love it. Uh, personally, I am shocked. Um, it it feels like pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it it, it feels like the most polished game in recent years. Um, aside from S and D private game glitches. Yes, y- yes, for sure. But <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Yeah, when you talk about like raw gameplay, it it feels complete. Guns shoot great. The movement feels solid. Um, maps are phenomenal. I the so far the launch maps I've been pleasantly surprised. Uh, we have a couple viable, you know, hardpoint uh, S and D maps and pubs to to top it all off. You Pretty know, fun. Um, I it's in my advanced call to the age of 24 <laughs> <laughs> not 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 being that cracked young SMG such a anymore. boomer geez i know boomer unreal um, pubs have been kind of like hit and miss for me um it's been mostly just 
just playing GBs or just playing ranked. Yeah. But I finally am kind of kind of getting that 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 pub itch every mm-hmm. so often now yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. Vanguard wanting to play more and more. So overall, I after playing the beta, I was not I was not expecting to be this excited for the game. This so I it, the sweaty. I I call it a a hundred percent plus of yeah. great great game so far. So I agree. Sure. I think it's just more interesting to play and i think a lot of people have problems with at least in the pro scene and competitive scene it problem some people have problems with like the destructible environment and everything and there's kind of a somewhat of a debate about it yeah well i mean like in the beta in the private games in the beta you could turn off the destructible environments and right now you can't Mm -hmm. and then not to mention the bomb glitches and the the glitches with hearing bombs planted and diffused right now even though the settings turned off like yeah Yeah, and I think also the diffuse icon that when you're diffusing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The bomb, the bomb glitch diffuse. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I think those things will get ironed out by the time we get to the league. I think they'll get fixed. Oh, I mean, definitely, they're gonna get fixed. Um, but yeah, everything like it just plays really well. I've honestly, I think I've missed the Modern Warfare engine. I think I just have more fun when I'm playing Modern Warfare engine rather than Cold War's engine. Wild. I think the maps are also, I think the maps are just fun, most of them. Um, oh, there's some trash ones, though. Yeah, there don't get me wrong. Trash there was bound to be, with 16 of them, there was bound to be some absolute misses. Sub but. pen? What? What were we... I mean, they were asking for Dude, some people. They were asking for some jokes. Yeah. That was like, each lane is a wall. It's straight wall. Three it makes lanes. no sense. It, it makes, makes no sense. No mm-hmm. sense. Oh, it's it, terrible. It's horrible. It is. But yeah. I think I've yes. quit it one time and I've quit out of it every single time since. Yes. Yep. But I agree though. If if that's the price we have to pay for 16 maps and a lot of them are great viable ones, I'll I'll take a sub pen. I'll I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah, quit yeah. out of it every time. But hey, you know. Definitely. I, I think we're, we're starting to see the maps kind of iron themselves out a little bit. There's definitely still some debate about what's going to be like the fifth or, or like the fourth and fifth heart, like S&D maps and things yeah. like that, you know, with like Dem Yankst and like Castle and kind of the debate about how those play out right now. And then that also comes down to like, will we get the destructible environment fixed? If not, then like, you know, Castle's kind of crazy. And like, you know, there's just kind of all of these different things where it's like there's still so many variables right now. But again, you know we're four days in like they, we, we can have a little bit of patience here probably with the the metas i guess but you know the the sweaty side of me wants it to get fixed immediately so we can get into these these full-on gb lists and we're, we're just getting the the ga list started now which i guess we didn't even talk about the full the full ga list oh, yeah. in the news. i mean i'll also be 100 percent honest i would like to see destructible environments competitive play we I see think what? I would like to see co- destructible environments in competitive play. Really? I would. And I think obviously that it's is just a hot take. it's not what we're used to. And I, I, some of the pros like they have their issues with it. But I just feel like it'd be, it, it makes for some nah. really interesting things could happen. Um, as it's long so as like cheesy, bro. Well, there was some angles. If you tune it, I'm not like I'm not like I, th- I think it needs tuning. Like I know you can like look through it and shock the wall. You can get aim assist or you'll see mm-hmm. um, someone's red name tag across it. Um, it's some crazy things, but I don't know. I think it, it, it if it's tuned right, it could be something really interesting and fun to see how people utilize it. Yeah, I don't care like, when it comes to respawn. It. You know, it's whatever, but a sneak just like feels like Rainbow Six Siege. Let's like punch a little hole in the wall. Bro, there's like been angle. some spots where it's like, yo, you can't even see the dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like four million miles away looking through a little hole in a speck of wood and yeah. he's sniping the bomb. You're mm-hmm. like, bro, I mean, like, like okay. come on. Like, <laughs> you know, at some point it's just too cheesy. So that's my thing. It's like you probably have to get rid of the destructible environments. But the thing is, we don't know how the maps are going to play without them. So maybe, yeah. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. We, but we need to at least have a chance to play them without it. It almost seems the game is ingrained with these environments. So, Right. I mean, you, like Castle, half the walls are destructible I near know. B-Bomb. So you got to mm-hmm. wonder what what maps will feel like without them. Probably, yeah. probably good, but they they were definitely hoping that like this would be ingrained within the game. So 
I mean, well, there's a reason why it came with a setting where there were there wasn't a turn off setting. It's because yeah. they want us to hopefully like it. Well, here's know? the thing too. Like, I don't. I, I'm trying to because there's that map decoy. And it's either like B-bomb or A- the one that's in like that barn or whatever. Yeah, where like literally all the walls are destructible. And I, yeah, but I, d- on, I don't remember if it's attack or defense. Um, I don't know if there's like a door to get through unless they go through the front. Like yeah, usually you're not. just like, so like, I don't know if it's, if it, that's the defensive team, like attack has a huge advantage to get that bomb down when they're going, if they're on the other side. I, I just don't remember what's what um yeah yeah but like that that bombs like just be just you don't go there if there's no destructible environments like how is anybody supposed to break that well that there's only one way in yeah. and they beat well, you there not going to be competitive that's what's gonna happen i know i know i i, I don't know and maybe i'm I mean, crazy that, that maybe not I, gonna I, be competitive anyway because it's too small the bomb sites suck but maybe. they're not playing that map anyway and competitive already hmm. but because so we'll see i don't know if that's the case for any of these other maps either like i I don't know them that well yet yeah castle will be the biggest one but i don't think it's going to be dim yanks is kind of whack too with how many destructible walls there are in the on the cabins or on like the churches or whatever it is um so we'll see Uh, that's probably the biggest question mark right now is how that's going to play out and then the patches that need to come through um but yeah we have the first official ga list right now for eu which luti uh put out today so we have the damage mags. So all weapons damage mags are GA'd. So anything that increases your damage for the mags, which makes sense. Because um, it just creates so much variance with guns. Yeah. At that point, it's like impossible to track. And like, mm-hmm. it gets crazy. Hollow point, which makes sense. That's the one that like tears your limbs off. <laughs> and uh, like creates extra damage to limbs, which is just cheesy. Like, mm-hmm. and it, it, like, it makes shoulder peaking worse because you can like shoot their arms. And it's like does as much damage as... It's like what? Why? And then frenzy and vital. So vital was the one that like gives you like vital is like high crazy. caliber basically, but like it increases the area in which headshots are. You can hit him in like the throat, and it's like a headshot. You can hit him like in the like chest, that. and it's like a headshot. Yeah, yeah. Upper and so they make guns literally cannons, and then frenzy as well. So I don't know. I mean, that's a decent list so far already with with the uh, GAs thoughts. Yeah, I it's. With with the amount of attachments these guns now have, they're gonna start doing things like that where it's just just cheese, man. And increasing the headshot multiplayer to to the neck chest area. Right, where SMGs were two shotting at close range. Yeah, I see. I I'm sure there's a lot of people who dislike the the new attachment system. I would much prefer just a simple choose two attachments from you know mm-hmm. the list but i i get it too i know that we're in a new era of cod with with a mixture of war zone and, and this kind of stuff but it's the it's this stuff that that makes me worried where it's i i just hope we can agree on gas where there's like, just a fine line that you just can't you can't ban too much or else you're just exactly. banning the whole game but you also you, have to ban enough where it's like competitively balanced and yeah. uh you you should be able to to increase damage of a gun. I like that makes no sense because that because that just takes away from like the whole character of a gun. Like I I, right. get, I mean again the whole thing is that you you should be able to build like eighty guns with the twenty base guns and then you can yeah. have all these like you know LMG setups and these SMG AR setups and things yeah. like that. But you know, I don't like it. So right, we'll see. I I do like the. This the start of the list, you know, with all the damage stuff, uh, vital frenzy, um, that that's great. But then, what what will be interesting to see is is what what weapons specifically. Like I know bar on on GBs is already uh, banned. I think, um, right. Then you know, and then it comes down like the sniper stuff. The STG snipers. Will the MP40 stay? Will, will it be the Type 100? I, I don't know. Yeah, it's so, gonna be crazy. Yeah. What do you do? You think we'll have a two gun or three gun meta? I think it's gonna be two gun. I, like, like I said, this is kind of something I talked about a lot. Was like, I, I think the uh, having the uh, just the the current loadout system basically guarantees uh, a two gun meta. 
just because you can make like a faster S STG class or whatever if you need or yeah. whatever it is. Like you just can make a faster class and then that will be the two gun meta, you know? Yeah. So like you don't need the third gun anymore to be able to do that. Ooh. So we'll see. Uh, the, the only real weird two, I think the two negatives right now for me would be the ADS bloom or like the, the weapon bloom right now, which is That's still like weird. a thing. So like I didn't get it that. was it was proven yeah, that like there is actually recoil bloom in the game, which is insane and should not mm. be a cop. Okay, do terrible. you want to explain what bloom is? Like where you where you shoot your bullet doesn't go. Mm -hmm. It's like in Fortnite. It's like <laughs> where you shoot your bullet kind of just goes in a certain area of where you're aiming. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually go where you're aiming. Like at long ranges, you, your bullet can just miss even though you're aiming right at them because your bullet just decides to miss. Mm hmm. And so it feels really RNG. So like at some certain long ranges, sometimes you can get some crazy weird uh, gunfights, especially with SMGs at long ranges. SMGs at long ranges have crazy bloom. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty whack. And then no trophies, obviously. Right now, the nade and, and stun spam is insane. It's, it's crazy. Like it's half crazy. the people in S&D die to nades yeah. every round. Yeah. It's hard to stay in one place, honestly. Oh, you get a you'll kill, just, you have to move. You'll just get naded out. Yeah, you have um, to move. Yeah, I, I was watching the Code Red tournament, like NYSL versus, uh, or Team Unrational or whatever, versus yeah. uh, Team Aiden. Aiden, the finals. And, uh, dude, yeah. <laughs> Clayster was getting naded, like, crazy. <laughs> oh, literally in all these tournaments, like, <sighs> every single time. It's an insane, it's an insane process. Like, it's constant nades. So uh, that is a problem. I, I'd prefer if we had like a, you know, the GA. This is a situation where I would love GAs. If you could have like a, you know, only two nades on the map at a time or two stuns at a map at a time, something like that and go from there. But I don't know, man. We will see. We will or see. Trophies. It's going to get crazy. Give us the trophy. True. Give Please, us the right? trophy. Amen. Amen. But I don't know. Thoughts on that, how Dead Silence works in the game? Hey, does anyone else feel like it's just kind of useless? I did. You mean ninja or dead silence? Dead silence. Oh. Like the. Uh, well, I think dead silence works, but ninja is the problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's just like times where, where I like you, you'll pop it. And maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. But. but I, I don't know. Maybe it is then just like ninja, like not not working then of like the, like, with like the, the silent footsteps. Then when you do pop dead silence, it is silent. But there's yeah. sometimes where it like doesn't feel like it changes anything. I I don't know. When when you have Deddy, you're fully silent. But when you're yeah. when you have only ninja on, it's only it's, three operators are silent. <laughs> well, yeah, full yeah. Only three are fully silent with mm -hmm. like when it comes to mantling and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, which is still again all these stupid glitches. But yeah, so we'll see. I don't know. It's not great though. Again, in, in S and D right now, there's times where it's like, bro. You can hear like right now the mantling and the falling and some of the reload sounds like the, the, the sound whoring in search and destroy right now is ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's got to get fixed. And that's the biggest problem right now for sure. Mm hmm. So Who are the three operators that are. This like the uh, female sound? ones. It's uh, oh. Beatrice. Um, like I have no idea. Paj Marathi or it, it's uh, the Indian one. Um, but it's a mistake though. Like it's not supposed to be that way. Or they're the only ones that are that are not glitched. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know which side's the glitch side. <laughs> yeah, uh, but three of yeah. them are have more power than the other ones because they're quiet. Yeah, gotcha. Because when they mantle, they don't make noise. When mm -hmm. they have dead silence popped, so people wow. people All are quick to it. find these things out. Yeah, I mean it's, it's impressive. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. I guess I think it's kind of it for Vanguard. I guess at this point, the maps are fun, the guns are fun, the gameplay's fun. It's just the the it's just the stupid glitches right now, and we'll see what happens with the hard point. I mean, we're just finally getting into some of the first scrims and respawn tournament stuff, so we're gonna get the first vibe for a lot of the respawn stuff. So with that said, I guess we gotta head into our our final segment of the day, which is uh, talking about these teams. So let's let's talk about who's the best in the game right now, baby. Let's hit it. Here we go. So let's talk about the best in the game. Some of the obviously we've had a lot of tournaments so far, and I think overall we can just kind of talk about talk about teams that have stood out to us, things that we've noticed while watching 
watching uh, teams play the results of some of these tournaments so far. There's been a handful of like GB, UMG, 7K tournaments and all of those things. Probably fun to talk about and everyone can kind of catch up on who's been winning and who's been doing things. So um, I don't know. Kick us off. What are you guys' thoughts so far? What are the things you've noticed? Where do you want to start? Um, Phase is still kind of crushing it, I think. Phase um, is good? Question mark. <laughs> phase is good. Are they? Probably. Um, then, I mean, Optic had some really good matches. Um, and they looked really good at times. Um, NYSL, not trying to be biased, but I think they also looked better yeah. than maybe what some people were expecting. Wait, wait, wait. Let's start with one team. Let's start with Phase then. Let's just like kick off with Phase. Well, they're, they're, they're CAD champions, and we can then we can hop from team to team. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, I mean, like, so far with, like, FaZe, it's, it's interesting. I love watching them play. I mean... 100%, yeah. Dude, they're just so tactical. Like, I, I talked about this in one of my videos, or I did kind of, like, a live reaction of the Optic versus FaZe finals, and, like, I had... And I had been watching... I did some, like, Learn From Pro stuff with FaZe in, in, the, for, in an earlier video. Anyway, um... But, like, you know, they, they just are so good identifying, like, what lines of sight they're not watching... And then w- whenever they have a little bit of a lane, they're pushing up to kind of constrict the map and get a little bit more map control mm. to figure out where you are, you know? And they're just so good at constricting that. I think that's really, like, spearheaded by... I think it's really really spearheaded by Selium and how he, how he kind of coordinates some of these pushes and, like, uh, weird lines of sight. He's just really good at communicating what he's seeing and what he's not seeing and asking questions. Mm-hmm. And I think that really helps, like... Simpa BZ and RCs like get a good picture of where guys are and then they take advantage of it. And that's what FaZe is so good at taking advantage of your mistakes. And like if you give up a little bit of a lane, they're right there. Like there was one moment where Optic wasn't watching uh you on uh on uh Tuscan on that map on in, in like round 10 or something. And like, of course, immediately the, like for like the five seconds that they're not watching mid, Selium, bang, two piece from behind. Like, it's just like how it goes. You make one mistake for like three or four seconds against phase and it always bites you, you know? Mm-hmm. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it's, it's really interesting to see too, like the impact, the, the subs versus the ARs too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Like with like the, the Kurt Meta, are, are any of their pros using the automaton? Or is it pretty much just the SCG and the MP40 um, right now? There's still some that use the automaton on certain maps. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it, gotcha. we've seen it a little bit more in respawns on certain maps too. So right now it's still a little bit of like a weird meta, but definitely more STG than not right now. Yeah. Like I was seeing Envoy use an STG on um, S&D. Uh, you know what I'm talking about by chance? Uh, Bow like, Cage. Bow Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Envoy was using the SCG there. I, I'm not sure if that was just because of like their like like team composition or not, but like we could be seeing a three three AR one one SMG meta on like cert, on on certain maps. Maybe. I think I could, um, you could see that 100. percent You know, or, what's that church map where the, I think it's a church? Demi um, angst. You're talking like, about snowy one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's snowy. Yeah. You can get on the roof like the church yeah, yeah, and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's like a long map. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't think it's gonna stay competitive. I don't. I, I know there's talks of removing it, but I think if it stayed in, it's like you're really gonna want to use like mm-hmm. long range weapons. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, like I don't know. Like, are, are you, do you guys think there's gonna be like a two two meta, or, or or do you think it's gonna be a three? I, right now we're seeing two two. I think we're gonna yeah. stay with two two for now. Like Desert Siege and some of those other maps. I really like Desert Siege, by the way. It's a really fun map with the train and stuff. Like, it's really mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know. I, I think we'll stick with a 2-2 meta right now, and that probably favors, like, you know, I mean, a lot of the team's built for 2-2 meta, mm-hmm. and definitely FaZe is very fine with that. Um, so we'll see. I, FaZe is a pretty, they're in a pretty good spot. They feel like they haven't oh, yeah. lost the passion. They feel like they're going to be a pretty dang good team again this year. That is for sure, and that's yeah. not surprising to anyone. Though in one of I, the tournaments... Oh, go ahead, Sam. No, no, no. I was going to say, what, with this 2-2, I would... Really love to see um, the the gorillas play. Um, I, I think their their team composition for yeah. sure like makes sense with the two two. Um, I haven't yeah. really seen them play at all, so I, you know I don't really I can't say anything for for the first five days of the game. But mm-hmm. they've been interesting. Yeah, I really want to see them go go all out here soon. But well, you know we'll see mm-hmm. for sure for sure. Yeah. Um, um, so what I was saying though is that. Um, FaZe did lose to Toronto in one of the tournaments. 
Yeah, in uh, the finals, right? Yeah, in the final. Well, Toronto got first, FaZe got second. Unbelievable. What trash wow. cans. <laughs> They're so <laughs> bad. I mean, what, FaZe has won, what, four of the yeah. tournaments so far? And there's been like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, where I think the majority of the pro teams played. Mm-hmm. Have they gotten um, anything worse than second? Yeah, they have a few times. Yeah. Um, but now, I mean, they've won one, two, three. They've won, they've won one, two, three, four. They've won five. Five of the 12, I think, that they've played in. Mm. That is pretty insane. <laughs> that is pretty About half insane. Of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, or maybe, or no, they've, oh, wow. Well, they didn't play in all. I know some of them no, they've no, been no, playing. No. They, and they some of them, they didn't the, have their full teams either. Okay, that's, that's actual facts. So mm. they. And in, in all the tournaments where phase where the full squad played, Abizi, Simp, Selium, and Arcides, they have won one, two, three, four of the five. There you They've go. won four of the five, where all four of them have played. Um, they played with Tupac in two of them, and they won one of those, and they like, got second in the other one. Mm-hmm. So uh, they, let's just say they're, they're pretty good at S&D boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, um, but yeah. also again, they also have an advantage early in the game. Them in Toronto and like new, and like Rocker, you know, because they yep. didn't change rosters. So same you know, teams. There is an advantage there with those guys who haven't changed. All the other squads are just trying to figure things out. So we'll see. Thoughts? I, let's let's talk, let's talk about New York then, because I mean they've been a really interesting team so far. I have some opinions. I mean, I have. I think there's a lot of. I mean, going into it, I'm going to be honest, I was obviously as very like, you know, I think they can do really well, but I wasn't sure if they actually would. But from what I've seen, been seeing in the tournaments and everything, um, it seems like they're going to be good. Uh, I think they have some. It's basically a new team, so I have some chemistry issues and things to work out. Clay and Krim are clearly the leaders of that team. And I think it actually helps um, just because neither of them can just start being a dictator for the team, um, which I yeah. think both of them have a, have a tendency to just start going into that role just because they are just like those natural leaders. But when they're both there, now someone who Clay right. maybe has more, uh, I don't want to say respect, but I guess respect for like Krim, he's going to have to take that in more than like, because he, he's teaching these other, he's teaching Hydra, he's teaching Neptune. You see it in their VODs and everything all the time. Um, but now Krim can have an input like, Clay, you yeah. shouldn't do that. For um, sure. And like Clay keeps it positive. And that's kind of, I think, always the biggest problem with Krim is that if, if, you, don't, if you don't take something that he says kindly, then suddenly it gets negative. And Krim's not going to apologize. So, you know, it comes down to like, there is that kind of positivity vibe that, that he's, that Clay's always going to bring better. And I think so far it's working pretty well with Neptune and Hydra. I like the vibes of that team a lot in their comms. Yeah, I mean, yes. what do you I guys agree. think of Neptune? He, he's been looking pretty good. In the tournaments I've watched, he's looked really, really good. He's made yeah. some demon plays on like Tuscan and on, uh, on uh, Berlin. I watched him make some insane plays there as well. He's looked really good. I, definitely impressive with both of them. I mean, Hydra's made some... That, that, they're definitely a Hydra. good team. Hydra is step. I mean, we really didn't get to see a lot of like Hydra scrimming and like how it communicated and stuff. We just saw no. what we saw in CDL and little clips here and there. Are you um, notice the English improvement too? I was watching. I'm like, dude, he he's this is he's easy to understand. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like his accent actually helps. Just be, it, I don't know why, but it's just like the way he calls <laughs> out. It's like. He's he, he, he yeah like and it's just like he's on people he's on people like it, like it's just like so he's under the beach i don't know like there's something it's about so, it that makes so, it almost oh, it's so innocent it's so easy so almost likeable. like to react to and he seems in the hydra thing i think every time he talks you feel like he's like he's really really into it yeah he he's so low-key though he never gets hyped it's just like good job guys like just i mean like, like when he when he gets hyped it's like just it's like, it's, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. just like <laughs> things like that. And like, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's uh, great. Or Clay and Crib, bro. Oh, my word. After they won that tournament, bro, that clip of like them talking to Shot, he's like, that's why you got dropped. 
That's why you got dropped. And like just the whole hype there was hilarious. And then and then Krim flipped on the voice changer. And I was dying. I was dying laughing. It was so funny. Yeah. Oh my god. But word. I think Hydra, I just think he's gonna be he, he he's gonna be great if he if he's not already great. He is clearly like and he makes call outs. He makes plans for the team as well. Like he's been taking um initiative on certain plays. Like, let's go, let's go here and do this. No, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah. everyone follows along. Um, there ne- are some times where Crim's like, yo, I need I needed a calm there. Or like, like, excuse me, those types of things. Like, he's definitely Crim's good at calling those types of things out. Like, yo, I need I need you to say something there, you know? And so yeah. I think that continually is gonna help him become more, even more consistent in S and D and a better team player moving forward as well. I've the potential is really high for this team. It's, I mean, it's really high. It is really high. And I get, yeah, the question is just like, how will the synergy end up happening? And I know Neptune, like he, he's had some really, really good clips. He's played like monstrously yeah. in some he of these tournaments. He is the quietest when they play. But there are moments that I have, um, I don't know, skepticism or just kind of like more reserve with them just because he is the most low key one in there by far. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And like, you know, the guys who are streaming are Krim and Clay. So you get to see their POVs, mm-hmm. you know, then it's like they're not, you know, Neptune and Hydra usually aren't streaming or anything. So you're not watching their POVs. So that can be a little bit tougher, too. Yeah, but it's nice to see because because Neptune, too, is also he's really quick. He's making play calls like he's working with Hydra, like Hydra, like, let's go do this. For sure. And it's really nice to see how everyone is really playing their part in there. And I think just especially out of Neptune, I don't know how he was for sure on Florida, but it feels to me like he just is communicating more. Yeah, and, I, I mean, I and agree. And that's just been super stressed, I feel like, with this squad. And I think specifically playing with veteran players, they're really going to want that communication. Yeah, seeing this potential play out is definitely like pretty fulfilling for like how good they could be. And it gets you pretty excited for the future for sure. I mean, any other thoughts there, Sam? Or you want to move on to Optic? Yeah, let's let's go to Optic, honestly. All righty, Optic Gaming, dude. I mean, Optic Texas, yeah. Optic Texas, bro. How- I I <laughs> I I almost want to like do a complete one eighty here because you're getting sweaty for Optic Texas. I'm getting a little sweaty. I so obviously oh. it's like the beginning phases, you know, whatever. But watching yeah. both, not only Shotzi, but like. Scump's point of view too. They 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 Dude, are both is exactly correct. Scump is Illy is exactly what Scump needs. Yeah. Yeah. In S and D. Especially. Mm-hmm. I, again, we haven't seen it play out in respawn yet and whether or not Illy has the IQ in, in respawn to make it work. But mm-hmm. Illy definitely has the IQ in S and D to make it work. And mm-hmm. he over communicates everything. The dude doesn't doesn't stop talking in, in S mm-hmm. and D. Um and that's what I think Dashy and Illy and uh and scump need on a team because those guys are definitely more low key communicators. And Shotzi where, was too. Oh, and, and Shotzi's improved. Uh, speaking of the word, that's ironic. That I use the word low key because they literally they all they like yo uh, low key though low key though does it be like yo low key though like not for real though like that's kind of godlike. So, I know it's so annoying. <laughs> Bro, that's, <laughs> that's, that's dashy. Like, not for real. That's kind of god. Not that's for real. Dashy, that's kind of godlike. <laughs> and then like <laughs> the, 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 the Illy and Shotzi just constantly are saying low key though. Like yeah. no, like no, for real though. You lying to me? Like, like dude, like, no. just talk normally. Like, okay, I'm not, bro. <laughs> they they are the most cod kids of cod kids. Like, yo, no high hezzy. Key? Like high key, low key though. No hezzy. Like, let's hit it, baby. Mm-hmm. Like they're just they live for the cod That's dialogue. Fire. It's hilarious. I know. And aren't Illy and Dashy were they they played wagers and stuff before? Oh, yeah. Like they're pretty, before. they're pretty tight. Um, it could be the makings of something great. You do, you know, I think there's always going to be that concern of, um, and they even talked about this on the process that just came out, it's like how they would kind of um, joke around maybe too much in scrims, not take it as seriously as maybe they needed to. Um, and, I, and I wonder if, if that's going to happen again. Another voice in the room, though, with Rambo is going to be so, that's where I think it's going to be huge. That's what I, I think Rambo and Center together. That's is gonna so be huge. big. That's so big. They needed it so bad. Yeah, hopefully, in this, you know, because I think Rambo is more like under the radar, and I think Sender has more of a uh, um, exuberant personality when it comes to talking, like the strategy, like just what yeah, you should but, be doing, what should be focusing on things Rambo, like that. 
I mean, he when he when he talks though, when he does talk, it, yes. it, you gotta listen. You it's know? analyzed. Like, it's like it's sure. logical. Like, it's analyzed. Like whenever analysis. Whenever I hear Rambo talking about Cod, I'm like, I'm dialed in. I'm like, I want to hear what he has to say. And so yeah, I think yeah. that's gonna help teams a lot. And I'm sure yeah. that's gonna be big. Uh, yeah, I, I think overall this team, you we're seeing everything that you want to see from them, except for a few more clutch plays. Obviously, they they lost the round eleven game five to Phase in the seven K tournament. They uh they lost to LA Thieves in a close series in the grand finals as well. So they've kind of been all over the place and uh, they've been in multiple grand finals now of these tournaments, but haven't been able to come out with one. So we'll see what happens mm-hmm. in the future. But um, I do like the comms a lot on the team in SNB. Yeah. What's really interesting too is I I almost think, and it kind of seems that the rules that I- I- Ilya and Dashi play have been kind of like switched to my mind. I... I totally thought that Dashi would, would be the one kind of like going rogue or, you know, kind of putting up the numbers. But so far, I feel like it's been, it, it's been Illy. He's been the oh, one. I mean, like Illy's kind of the island guy. Like if he's yeah. going to flank, he's generally the one hitting it. It's either him or Dashi. Yeah. It's yeah. Illy's you know, year. So it's going to be like, he, like he went like 13 and two on s and I think. Like, yeah, he's looked really good. Playing, but so. again, early in the years, Illy's always going to have an yes. advantage because he is an absolute sweat. He doesn't got, get yeah. off the game, you know? So it's like, and again, like you saw that, like even like the first few days, it was like Shotzi and Illy did like a 15 hour stream, you know, day one. Like these guys want it bad, you know? And mm-hmm. that's exactly who Scump needs to be teaming with. You yes. Know? So yes. Th- I think this makes a lot of sense right now and it's looking pretty good for Optic fans. They got to be pretty excited about that because uh, it's definitely optimistic, to say the least, pairing with the coaching staff as well. So mm-hmm. we'll see how they play in Respawn. Respawn, obviously, is going to be a question mark. And again, we don't even have a third game mode yet. So like we're overanalyzing, you know, s and tournaments at the beginning of the year with bomb glitches and, you know, playing with all this stupid crap sound whoring. Things are going to change like crazy. But optimistically, you have to like the, the, the baseline for how the team's playing together right now, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, also, I mean, and to kind of, Side, I think this is going to be the most competitive. I mean, every year is going to be the most competitive year of COD, but again, this year is going to be it's going to it's be really be nuts. I mean, Surge got second and they lost to Spades. Yeah, yeah, Surge. We, saw Pred, we saw Pred make some insane plays in that too. He looked good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the highlight play that was all over Twitter was kind of like the 1v3 that he had that was disgusting. Mm. And uh, you, you could see his natural gun skill and SD instincts to hit the flank there and play that wrap back towards top broken on uh tuscan it was just really sick so overall like i don't know that team gets really interesting and then you know i, I really liked la thieves so far in these snd tournaments i mean kenny kind of right now with envoy looks like a really fun kind of pairing and how they play snd how they approach communication i mean kenny just has really he's just really consistent like when it comes to, like comms mm-hmm. and as a teammate you know what you're getting with him and that that team looks really really reliable too and then in the tournaments that Toronto's played, they've looked good. So it's like the teams that we thought would be good right now are living up to the hype and look like the teams to beat, at least at this point. Toronto hasn't played that many tournaments together, and uh, they've only played two together with their full squad. And then the one that they won was with Rated uh, instead of Cami when he wasn't able to play. So it's kind of a weird situation right now. But yeah, I don't know. Was it, is there any, any other like gen- general thoughts overall? Um as as squads, like what are you guys' thoughts on LA Thieves? I I think Octane has has looked really good. I'm yeah, it has looked v- really good. I'm very curious with um, I guess Envoy. Um, really, I He's I think made some insane plays, dude. Yeah, yeah. I I think for this team to be top top three, I think he needs to be the one that 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 we saw in Modern Warfare. You know, um, yeah, what the one making plays, the one kind of being that 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 ratty sub and, you know, being able to put up high high numbers um, and like, you, you know, not not necessarily like do it all. But I, I think it's safe to say we saw a a slightly less player last year or or during the Cold War season. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't like the take over the map player no, last year. Yeah, yeah. for Not often, at least. Yeah, mm. so and he with, only really did it in control when when we really saw it happen. So I agree with you though. I mean, like like I said, I think the calm and the chemistry between Envoy and, and Ke- Kenny right now is exactly what you wanted to see, at least in S and D, with Envoy and the playmaking ability that he has, and then 
Um, right now, Envoy has just been playing off his teammates insanely. Well, I'm I'm pretty optimistic about that team. Yeah, for, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I think every team's just gotten is is better. I yeah, it's it's. Stacked, I don't think this it really, really is. Like I like I just don't think there's really gonna be a lot of freebies. Like you really are gonna have to go into every series, like you can't relax like you're gonna really have to put your best foot forward in like every game no matter who you're playing against yeah i i agree it it's gonna be fun so basically those are all, basically all the teams who have really been like continuously streaming their scrims florida's i mean in the times where florida has streamed i thought they've looked pretty good with their team so far but we haven't got to see a lot of them yet um but uh, it's gonna be fun man i am really excited to see how this plays out it's gonna be hype Mm-hmm. So yeah, same. I don't know, man. I've, it's gonna be fun. I think those are kind. Of, which teams? Let's kind of order your top three right now. I mean, Phase number one. Then who's looking mm-hmm. at number two? Who's number three for you right right now? These in this way too early thoughts and only watching really S and 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 a uh, bit of respawn. I mean, like based based purely on S and D, um, Phase. I probably do Optic and then Toronto. I haven't seen a lot of a Toronto gameplay. I imagine they're probably still pretty good. So, like, how do you not put them on the list? Yeah, um, that's fair. But yeah, I mean, I'd, yeah, phase, phase Toronto optic right now, I think are like the scariest teams. Yeah, I'm, I don't know, man. New York's, I'm tempted to, to, to really hop on that New York. It's going to be really good train. But I think I, New York will be really good. For the sake of the podcast, I cannot do that. That is, that yeah. is something that cannot possibly happen. You can't we, have, we have enough gas around here for like at least seven people. So, yeah. Well, they deserve it all. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So I guess without further ado, we can go into intelligent or irrelevant and uh, see what happens. So let's hit it. to speak does not make you intelligent oh intelligent or irrelevant sam how's it going over there man it's going great i put i post this poll a while ago so we got a lot of votes oh yeah it's so many seconds ago (laughs) so so general committee as we're talking about vanguard let's let's get let's get their thoughts you know so on a scale of one to four what uh one being your one being the best what are your thoughts on vanguard one like being so, the best, right? One, oh. two, three, four are the options. I, I people think, gotta be three's gotta be leading, right? Three's leading because the four is too extreme. No, no, no. I think two's leading. I think it's probably two. We're also I early think, in the COD think, cycle here, I think the so community is is like higher, like a higher on this COD. With what like would how you, it feels maps? What would good. you uh, rate rate it yourself? I'd give it a three. I'd give it a two. <laughs> three is the second worst. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a two. And then obviously it's a two. Okay. I was confused. I was like, bro, I said yeah, one I being agree. best. One, yeah, two, three, dumb. four. Ranked irrelevant. One, ranked Sam's two, irrelevant. Ranked three, ranked yeah, I already know that. I've already been like five or five <laughs> times tonight. So <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> no, you're well, doing great over there, man. I'm, I appreciate you. I'm going to vote for because I, I don't think You can join the GB team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm voting for it because... I don't think anyone thinks it's like that bad. Truly, I don't. So we'll see. <laughs> when are we doing the best of three GBs? That's a real question. Hey, facts. I, um, I think we should. Is a good time, but okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Vo- yeah, it's definitely two. It's it's yeah. definitely two. Hundred percent. That's gotta be leading, right? Well, here we go. Forty-seven percent two. Uh, twenty-nine percent three. Fifteen percent one, mm. and nine percent four. Oh, okay. So a lot, a lot of positivity. So scrolling through the amount of comments we have, all one of them from none oh. other than Gersh. Shout oh. out Gersh. Support in Shout last out second. The last yeah. second support. The Hail Mary from Gersh. Illy, MVP this yeah. year. This is Amen. the year. I was That's just a little Gersh. early on the prediction. <laughs> per Gersh, graphics and gunplay, nice, but maps are hit or miss. And Bloom Brat, Bloom Bad, bro. If I wanted to play with Bloom, I would load up LeBron Thanos building simulator Fortnite. <laughs> oh, yes. Facts. Any, anyway, Facts. 
Anyway, Ellie's winning MVP and Josh needs to have me on the show. I will rename myself to I Hold Shift That Helps. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, funny. that honestly will probably help Gersh, honestly. I hold shift so, elite. Yes, there you there go. You go. Yep. There you go. And that's what it's, it's it's inevitable. Uh, but 100%. I think it is, you know, cir- circling back, I think it's cool that the community is actually like hype about this about this call of duty. Oh, yeah. And what we need right now is the rank support. So pray give our, us that rank play. Hammer, come on, give it to us. Don't let the community down. You're already on a good note with the the gameplay, and I think the maps are overall good. I know they, there's like, at least five that are mid. good. Yes, yes, which is like <laughs> better than Cold War. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what you can say. There's barely so. five maps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was rough, but I'm pumped. We're gonna have a good CDL season. We're gonna have a good Call of Duty season. I'm putting it out. In the cosmos. Oh, this is the good juju's right here. It's gonna be insane. Yeah. I'm actually so pumped. Like after getting the game going, I am hyped for this year. It's gonna be insane. Getting that ranked play, hopefully in January, get the league kicked off. Someone will buy the spot. We'll have the insane roster. It'll be methods and Paul X and I don't know Tiege and someone. And it's gonna be a great time. It's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. I can't wait, and I'm looking forward to it. Heck yeah, brother. Without further ado, boys, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Obviously, this is episode 101. If you guys haven't checked out episode 100, Ooh. last week was a great time. We did Hot Operators. We had a great time debating some of the best teams in the CDL. Mm-hmm. And um, we obviously just had a good vibes episode with episode 100 out there. I did a Q&A, answered a lot of different things. You guys can check out that episode. I think it's still really very watchable now and uh, worth watching for sure. We appreciate you guys for supporting all the likes, the comments, the the reviews means a lot. Helps the podcast grow, and that's we're trying to do this full time, and we can't do that without you guys. We always appreciate that. But as always, guys, I'm Josh. Obviously, to my right is Bash and Scorpio with Sam, and to our finest right per usual is Rex Shady Nero. And guys, this has been the best three quality esports podcast, and we will see you next time. Oh yeah. <laughs>